Today, we're going to talk about a fantastic pen, a pen that I really, really like, and I've only had it for a fairly short time. I'm already completely in love with it. Um, it's a pen by this brand. By now, it should no longer be a secret that I'm quite a fan of this brand, Visconti. I think they make lovely pens. They make some really ugly pens, but they make some pens that are just absolutely gorgeous work well, do well, I love them. I got this pen from La Couronne du Comte, and um, as always, got really good service, um, so if you're looking for this pen in Europe, you don't know where to get it, they have it. Um, it's a limited edition, so I wouldn't wait too long. I got a bottle of Edelstein along with the ink. Apparently this was the ink of the year, Edelstein Amber. I'm not sure who said this was the ink of the year, but someone said this is the ink of the year. I don't know what year, but it's a cool ink, apparently, and uh, I agree, it is a nice ink. Um, so I got that along with the with the, the, the pen for free, which is very, very cool, um, and they have it. So, okay, cool box, it says Visconti Firenze, the writing Renaissance. Um, this is just a cardboard box, you open it up, out comes a box, faux leather, um, has Visconti in there in relief, I like that. Got the little drawer, I always like the drawer. And in there is a little booklet, just grabbing it here. This is a high quality booklet, uh, I was pleasantly surprised. So it has uh, some pictures, very really nice full color pictures of, of these pens. Uh, it's very glossy paper, Always, it almost feels laminated, it's, it's amazing. Uh, it gives you some background on the pens, gives you filling instructions, and it even has an identity card for the pen. My pen apparently is number 724 out of 1000, and um, no, there you have it. Um, which pen I'm talking about? I'm talking about the Opera Crystal. Now this is a gorgeous pen. Um, I wanted to have an opera for a long time. I had an opera elements. I have an opera elements, which I love. One of my favorite pens. Um, and then I wanted to have an opera master. Now these are really expensive, and the, the 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 finish I wanted is no longer produced. So I thought, okay, then I need something else, and I got the opera crystal. Um, this is a big pen. We're not talking about a small pen. Uh, here I have a, a Schaefer snorkel, uh, which is a, a dwarfed a bit. Besides this pen. And maybe you want to see it next to something really big. Here we have a, um, uh, a Mont Blanc 149. So this is this is not a small pen. You can get a blue version. You can get a clear version. I got the clear version because I'm a bit of a sucker for demonstrators. I, I, I love it when you can see the insides of a pen. I think it's cool. Um, you can see the ink sloshing around, which is just fun. Uh, childish, but fun. Um, that's all there's to it. Okay, so I'll talk you through the past of the pen, tell what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sample. Let's start on top. On top of the cap, it has the Visconti logo. Um, which way goes up? I can't tell. Oh, there we go. Um, let me try to refocus here. Uh, it's, it's a little magnet thing. You can pull that off. You can have your initials on there, or a, a gemstone, or a, a zodiac sign, or whatever. You can purchase those separately and, and smack them on there. And you have that, that nice Visconti clip, which I love. Uh, it's a spring-loaded clip, which makes sure you won't actually break it off very easily. I think Visconti actually makes the claim that these things cannot be broken. Now, I'm absolutely certain, certain that they can be broken with enough force, but, I mean, clearly, under normal use, you should be able to take some stress. Lovely cap. Lovely... Uh, clear inner cap so you can see the nib through the cap. I love that. No big white inner cap blocking it or something. But the center band, which says Opera Crystal, uh, and uh, it has the number 724 out of 1000. Um, this is a power filled pen, which means you unscrew this blind cap. I'm not going to operate it because there's ink in there. Um, it's uh, kind of like a um, uh, a Twisby VAC 700, or, or uh, I guess of like a Schaefer snorkel, um, 
is there's a plunger in there, so you, you unscrew that, you pull it out, and in one smooth motion, you, you push that back in. There's, you can see that rod in there, I'm sure you can, um, which has a little plunger on there. It creates a vacuum, you put it in the ink bottle, it creates a vacuum and draws up ink. One of the fancy things that Visconti has made is a double reservoir. So you have a big reservoir right there, you have a small reservoir in there. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but it's in there. And there is a whole technique that's described in the little booklet that once uh, this starts to run dry, you can unscrew this bit again. I think you turn it around or something, and ink runs into the small reservoir. Uh, I think you can also, there's something going on with you can empty out that small reservoir so that when you're flying, uh, and there's uh, differences in, in air pressure, your ink will not flow, will not be forced out of the nib because that reservoir is empty and, you know, it's sort of like a buffer. Um, very cool, they thought about that. You have the section, section feels like it's chrome or something, it's very, very smooth, nicely tapered, and then it flares out just a bit. Uh, the cap has that sort of half twist thing that will make it uh, put it on there in place which is lovely because this is one of the circling the square pens that's what something by Visconti so what you can what you can see possibly can see is that it has these flat sides and then the corners are rounded off so it's like a square but with the corners rounded off circling the square and so you got the, the robustness of the square and the whatever sensitivity of a circle they got a whole theory behind that uh, which is which is quite nice, and because of this half twist turn system, the cap and the barrel always align well. So you got those nice flat sides aligning perfectly well, which I I love. What about the nib? The nib is chromium 18. I don't think I have seen a nib of that material yet, um, and it's it's uh, it's a bit fancy. It's called the Smart Touch. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, I'll show you a, a close-up. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, there could be some laser engraving going on there. Um, and as you can see, it wraps all around. And I just have to get a good grip on this. It wraps all around the feed, which looks pretty cool, if you ask me. Also, uh, you may notice uh, the nib is points up just slightly, uh, making this a Waverly nib. Yeah, I, I guess I can say that. Um, at least... I'm not sure what Visconti calls it, but that's what, what I would call it, a nib that's pointed slightly upwards. Okay, um, so it says Smart Touch, that's the name of the nib. Um, first time I saw that, I saw this in an uh, advertisement somewhere, I also saw this appendage, which came with a pen. And this appendage is made to be stuck on the nib, like so, and then uh, you put that in a bottle of ink, and then you operate that, that power filling mechanism. And what do you get? You get ink flowing right in there. You can get the last drops of ink from your bottle. You will not get ink on the section or on your fingers or whatever. And also, uh, you can use this to walk up to a ballpoint user and say, Are you sure you don't want to use fountain pens? I think you do. Maybe I should inject you with some ink. Come on, bend over. Or something. I don't know. Um, is this absolutely necessary? No. This is a redundant accessory. You can just put this in an ink bottle and fill it. But it's cool. You can get the last bit of ink from your, your ink bottle. If you have a shade for snorkel, that will have the same thing, except you don't. You can't actually take it out. It's, it's integrated in the pen there, but fancy. And it's called the Mosquito. A mosquito, uh, which is... Uh, just cool, cool little thing. Uh, so when I saw this, and I saw Smart Touch, I actually thought it was Smart Ouch. I thought it was like a, a sadist pen or something. But apparently, it's all good. Um, what about this nib? Chromium 18, smooth, nice, works well. Uh, you can get fine, medium, broad, or stub. I got a stub nib. Um, lovely. Absolutely lovely. So what do I like about the pen? What do I not like about the pen? Well... It's not a small pen. I like that. If you post this uh, uh, friend here, um, you, you've got a lot of pen. I mean, this this is this is not small. Uh, it's top heavy when you do so. So I would probably not post this. And it's for me, it's definitely big enough. Uninked, this pen weighs 50 grams. 
uh, that is significant. So that doesn't sound like a lot, but that's what a heavy pen weighs. Now, very few pens are actually heavier than that, in my experience. So I like that. I like the size, I like the weight, I like the feel, I like the way it writes. Um, I'm, I'm very happy with this pen. I like that filling system. Yeah, it's a little goofy, but it's it's part of the fun. It's totally unnecessary, but you know you want to have it. It's one of those things. Um, very cool. Anything I don't like about the pen? Well, this click system can flick a little bit of ink from the uh, nib into the cap. And as I got the demonstrator, you will see that. Is that a big issue? For me, no. no. Some people would not appreciate it because of the aesthetics. For me, it's fine. Apart from that, so far, I have found nothing about the pen I dislike. Except for the price. This is not a cheap pen. But what you get is excessive quality, a very smooth writing experience, a funky accessory to scare people with, and then that's all that's to it. So what I'll do next is writing sample. I hope this was useful. And um, that's all there's to it. So I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, boys and girls, it's time to have a look at that Visconti Opera Crystal Demonstrator Mosquito Pen. Uh, for understandable reasons, I'm going to entitle this Visconti Opera Crystal. The nib is a stub. And you should be able to see some of that nice line variation. Come back to that. The ink is Edelstein by Pelican. That is Pelican. Amber. 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 Well, you know what I mean. Amber. <coughs> like the girl's name. Anyway. Bit of writing. Smooth. That's the way to describe this writing. It's nice, it's smooth. Um, because of that stubness of the nib, you get this nice line variation. Broad down strokes, narrow side strokes. Um, very cool. It's a pleasure, a joy to use this pen. Let me do some fast writing. And uh, there we go. Writes well. No real skipping. Sounds good to me. What about wetness? I am yet to encounter a dry Visconti pen. Most of these pens are on the border of being gushes. Um, nice, wet. This paper draws up ink fairly quickly, but I mean, this is a, this is a wet pen. Uh, I like that. Okay, what about line variation? I'm not sure how flexy Chromium 18 is. I've got the feeling I'm not going to be able to... This is quite some pressure. This is no pressure. You'll get some line variation, but I'm already getting line variation because of the, the shape of the nib, because it's a stub. Um, you can see it lays down a lot of ink. You can see this is some feathering. This is a Rhodia notebook, so that's saying a lot. Um, nice, wet, smooth, works well. Um, I'm sorry, but I love this pen. So, I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.